the hunted. The hunters. It is so in history. The lead hunters today in this opera, Eric Curry, number 80. John Copeland, number 94. Alabama's defense, Russian cover, one of the best in the nation. The target, Shane Matthews, number nine, Florida quarterback. But it is a truth. The hunted one can be resourceful and dangerous. ABC Sports College Football brings you the Southeastern Conference Championship Game. Presented by Dr. Pepper, matching Alabama and Florida. To refresh your memories, the Southeastern Conference expanded, went to divisions this year. Florida, Georgia tied in the East. Florida beat Georgia when they played. Florida wins the East to meet Alabama, which won the West. And Alabama comes in ranked second in the nation. The winner of this game will be headed to New Orleans and the Sugar Bowl game. The last team to beat Alabama was Florida last year. Since then, Alabama has won 21 straight. The SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper butler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. By the heartbeat of America, Chevrolet and your local Chevy dealer. By Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. And by Norelco patented lift and cut shavers, we make close comfortable. They say the temperature's around 46 degrees, but that little brisk wind out of the north makes it a bit cooler than that, at least to the fields. On the left, Steve Spurrier, third season at Florida. Gene Stallings on the right, third season at Alabama. Stallings is in a position to play for a national championship. It has been a, quote, rebuilding year for Florida. Number three is Larry Kennedy for the Gators. Harrison Houston is number 84. They're wearing the dark uniforms. They are the home team. Alabama, the visitor, despite the fact it is in Birmingham, nonetheless, it is, quote, a neutral site. Michael Proctor will kick it off for the time. Slight wind at his back as it swirls around, knocks it down to the four-yard line. This is Harrison Houston. He's a flyer. He is brought down at about the 23-yard line. Coming in to make the play for Alabama was number 40. And he got there in a hurry, Mickey Kahn, who is a cornerback. So here's the Gators' leader, Shane Matthews, veteran. Look at that, 9,000 passing yards with 72 passing yard, uh, touchdowns. The Dr. Pepper starting lineup. Look at Eric Rett. You'll see him all day, number 33. He runs and he catches. He's a very busy man in the Florida scheme of things, and he's got the ball right now. Just a simple power play over right tackle, and he moves the ball to the 30. The people up front for the Florida Gators today must uh, play pretty well in order for them to have a chance. And those two fellows highlighted there, Reggie Green and Jason Odom, they are freshmen. And those freshmen are going to be looking at two of the very best of the business. Show you the Alabama defense in a minute. It is second down and four. Red has it again. They turn him back inside and he won't get it. He'll get just over the 30-yard line before he goes down. It's going to be hard to run outside on the Alabama defense because of Messrs. Copeland and Curry. And outside of them, you're going to find Lemansky Hall and Antonio London. So if the first two don't get you, the second will. In the secondary, Langham and Teague. And again, they emphasize exceptional people on the outer defense. Third down and three for Florida as Shane Matthews on a little delay on his way back to pass hands it off to Eric Rett and the junior from Pembroke, Pines, Florida takes it for a Gator first down at their own 43. Nice call by Steve Spurrier who calls all of the plays. Florida came in as a, as a passing team. The first three plays are run Watch it as he goes inside of Curry, the defensive end. 
three plays, three runs to establish some kind of a run game. Matthews again. This time there's a severe case of head button as Michael Rogers met him head up, head on, and took him down. Rhett is a tough guy at 211, but Rogers at 230 handled him. Michael Rogers, 230 pound sophomore, comes from Laverne, Alabama, and will be one of the bell cows for Alabama next year. The Tide making some last second defensive changes as Florida comes up on second down and 12. Alabama going to their nickel, expecting a pass. They get it. Ball is thrown to the outside. Be a gain on the play of about four yards as Harrison Houston, the junior from Pensacola, makes the catch. Tommy Johnson, number 10, is the nickelback that came in and he makes the tackle. Alabama defense, their base defense is a three-man line, four linebackers. When they go to nickel, they put in an extra defensive lineman. That'll be Nunley. They rush four, and they have two linebackers, and then the extra back, as you mentioned, Johnson, five defensive backs, thus the nickel name. It'll be third down and six. gets the pass off penalty flag is down they are short of the first down as Alabama's defensive people come at you in volleys Willie Jackson is the man that made the catch but the flag went down a long time ago top of your screen number 55 on the left side that's Mario that's Antonio London just did not get back. It still will be third and short for the first down. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, repeat, third down. The referee is Ron Gilbert. It's like a turnover. Stallings, uh, he knew that he was going to get the ball on a punt because he had stopped uh, Florida from the first down. Third down and one now. The opponents have not had a lot of luck against Alabama on third down conversions in early parts of the ball game this season. <laughs> They've had a luck against this defense anywhere. <laughs> they try for it up the middle. Rhett dives. He's got it. He's on the Alabama 45-yard line, and he's got a first down. the center of that offensive line for Florida they've got a little bit of experience in the center with Crouch and Golden and Watson where they are young is at the tackles two true freshmen start for Florida at tackles green on the left and Odom on the right call it the 46 on the snap Matthews back shows the ball shows pass gets pursued gets his pass off pass is caught Matthews goes down, takes a pretty good lick from the Pursuit 55 London, but Charlie Dean, the tight end, is downfield on the sidelines for the catch. And it's going to be a Gator first down, so they are moving the football. Here's the freshman right here. Now watch uh, Curry. He's going to loop inside and put some pressure. These little loops have given problems to uh, the young offensive line for Florida. Matthew shows enough ability to get outside and make a play. All right, you've got uh, three wides now. Rent the single back. Matthews to throw it, goes right down the middle with it. The pass is caught by Willie Jackson. He's inside the 20. They mark him at the 15-yard line. First down for the Gators. That's a great throw, Keith. Actually, they had four wide receivers in the ball game. He's lined up as a tight end. Releases, doesn't get a jam. London does not jam him at all. This is a, still a tough throw. You see Rogers, 52, almost gets his hands on it. The concentration to catch that ball, knowing that the safety was going to hit you. Outstanding play. Florida center, Gant Crouch, uh, danger. Uh, went off the field. David Swain is in to snap the ball. Comes in cold off the bench, but he gets it off all right. Pass again goes to the tight end. It is Dean, and Charlie Dean is out of bounds inside the five-yard line. And so the Florida Gators come out. They run in the, on the first uh, three snaps. 
Then they go to the short game with uh, Matthews, and the tight end becomes a prominent receiver, and it's first and goal to go for the Florida Gators. Alabama has not given up a touchdown in the first quarter all year long, but they have not played Spurrier and the Gators, the best passing team in the conference, they and Georgia. Matthews is 5 of 5 for 61 yards so far in this opening drive. Alabama has yet to own the football. Rhett. Taken down for a loss back at the 5. Lemansky Hall, number 11, leading the defensive charge. Sometimes the best chance to score offensively when you're inside the 5 is on your first crack at it on first down or second because it gets tougher as you go. Lemansky Hall, number 11, keeps his outside position and makes a great play there. Second down and goal from the five. Matthews gives it off to Rhett. Touchdown, Florida. going against the freshman. He takes himself out. Good scouting by Florida. A draw play inside of him. And the first touchdown all year in the first quarter against Alabama. Judd Davis for the point. Shane Edge, the punter holds. Low snap. Edge got it down. Kick is good. And so Florida gets on the board first. <laughs> That's called by the official scorer a touchdown pass. It'll go down in my mind the shortest touchdown pass <laughs> in the history of the game. That's about a foot and a half yard pass. <laughs> we'll show we'll have a look at it and see what we can see here in a minute. But right now, let's continue as Alabama has been stung with the Florida Gators in the opening possession with 10.03 to go in the first quarter. The deep people, David Palmer's a man they want to have it. He's number two. Alabama's got Anderson and Williams back there to help him out. And the man who will kick it is Ryan Rulin. Alabama's special teams, pretty good. This guy in particular, very good. They don't want to kick it to him. They learned from last week. That's right. Vanover tore him up running the ball back. This one goes down to Craig Harris, who is a fullback, and it'll be around the 28-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. Number 80, Curry, runs himself really out of the play. And that's a little flip forward to pass to Rhett. Take a look at it from this view. Watch us. That's a dangerous little handoff here. You spent, you spent a lot of time during the week practicing that little handoff. Derek Lassick opens up as the single back for Alabama. From the 28-yard line, Lassick finds a hole, cuts it back into the middle, and goes to the 35. Pickup of seven yards on the first carry for him. Looking at the Alabama quarterback, you see that uh, Jay Barker has six touchdowns, nine interceptions. He's not too good with the long game, but he's pretty good at the short game. The Dr. Pepper starting lineup for Alabama. Larrick, uh, Derek Lassick is the primary running back for the Tide, uh, though uh, Sherman Williams has played more and more, Ian Anderson, as the season's gone along. Second down and three now for Alabama. Penalty flags down. Contact was made along the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. Man in the white hat is Rom Gilbert, the referee. There are the rest of the gentlemen working with him today, all SEC, obviously, since this is the championship game, the inaugural one for the SEC conference. No contact, no foul. said no contact to pick up the flag so there's no play it's second down and three 
Yeah, but you're offside. That's I don't agree with that. The defensive man was in the neutral zone when the ball was snapped. Lassick has the ball again, spins for his first down. So both teams open up running, and both teams open up moving the ball. The offensive front for Alabama features Toby Shields at center, and he is, in the minds of some of the Florida coaches, one of the best in the game. Zook thinks he's the best they play against all year. Ron Zook, the defensive coordinator for the Gators. Florida leading seven to nothing off the opening possession. This is Lassick again. Defensive flow is quite good this time for the Gators. That snap took place just outside the 43, and he's taken down at the 46. The defensive unit for Florida, Carter Gunner, McMillan Church, the four down people. The backers, uh, Carlton Miles, number 31, is a very active player. Plays all over the field. And the defensive secondary, uh, there have been times when they've been very good, and there have been times when they've been uh, not so good. Second down and seven. This is Houston, Martin Houston, the Alabama fullback, 235-pound senior, is very close to a first down. Alabama offensively is not flashy. They just want to run the ball, control the ball, do not create their, have any turnovers, and let their defense get on the field. They could steady their ship, however, if they can answer with a touchdown right here, because the Gators very precisely move down the field to score. It's the first time that Alabama, Alabama has been behind in the first half all year. Two fullbacks in this alignment. And on third and short, they just hammer the ball straight ahead, and Martin Houston gets his first man at the Florida 45. And for the first time today, let's hear from Jack Aruth. Well, Keith, that shovel pass for a touchdown was not unexpected by the defensive coordinators for Alabama. In fact, when the defensive line came off, the first thing the defensive coach, Mike DeBose, counseled them about is we practice that in practice. He said, you can't let the emotions of the game get to you. You've got to be prepared for that type of an option. Parent Lynch joins Elastic behind the line of scrimmage. Barker's first pass of the day is caught. David Palmer went up and whipped the DB. Palmer at 5'9", 170, just went up and claimed it. David Palmer, number two. If there is one weakness on this Alabama team, on the entire team, it is their passing game with David Palmer. The ball was a little bit late and behind him, but Palmer came up with the play. Right in front of Larry Kennedy. It's first down for the Tide at the Gators' 29-yard line. Lassick is back in the game and has the ball and goes to the 20. Six and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Now Alabama close enough to be called a threat. Seven to nothing, the Gators on the opening kickoff. Marched it right on down and stuck at the end zone. Alabama trying to answer the inaugural SEC championship game. First year of divisional play, the winner goes to the Sugar Bowl. Debo Swinney checks in along with Donnie Finkley for the Tide. Lassick looking around for daylight, finds some, runs over Kennedy. He stuck his shoulder into Larry Kennedy and rolled him down. Tomorrow, the country's finest football players will get some of their honors. We'll have the Maxwell Award, Outland Trophy, and more at the 1992 College Football Awards presented by Subway, and also the Bowl Coalition matchups for the Sugar, Orange, Cotton, Fiesta, and Citrus will be announced. The J.C. Penney Golf Classic will also be seen tomorrow on ABC Sports. So we've got a full day for you. This is Lassick. He hammers his way to the five-yard line. Lassick has carried the balls. Seven yards, eight yards, three yards, eight yards, eight yards, and seven yards. That's pretty good average. Darn good average. One of the reasons is he got a fullback that can block watches he's going to get the linebacker that's robinson 41 the offensive line does their job this is a great blocking offensive line that alabama has second down and three from the gator five here goes lassick touchdown the tide is answered Take a look at the 
white shirts. Shields at the uh, center gets a great block. Houston again gets a block, number 35 on the linebacker. That was awful easy if you're an Alabama fan. Michael Proctor for the point. Jeff Wall holds. The kick is good. With 5.07 to go in the first quarter. It's a 7-7 ball game. There's a story on Alabama's scoring drive. As you look at that, let me give you an idea of what this game is like. Florida went 77 yards in 11 plays for their touchdown. So it's very nearly identical scoring drive for each team. And we're even at seven. Harrison Houston and Jack Jackson. Deep. to kick it off. Michael Proctor is a freshman. He's from Pelham, Alabama. Got it up pretty high. Wind doesn't help him much there. The catch is made by Houston up on the 16-yard line. And Houston gets it out uh, close to the 30. So once again, they get a pretty good starting field position. Well, now, we've got the Chicago Bears going down to Houston, Texas. On ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, they call it the House of Pain. Houston at 7-5. and five. The Bears are at 4-8 and eight in the NFC Central. Houston in the AFC Central, trailing uh, Pittsburgh by two games. They need to win. Swain, the new center, is in for Crouch. Crouch, unfortunately, for Gator fans, out with a knee problem. Matthews is 6 for 6, 66 yards and a touchdown. Handling the ball is Eric Rett, and the Alabama defense jumps him after a yard or so, maybe two. That injury to the offensive center for the Gators is going to cause further problems. They were a young offensive line coming in. Now they have, they have five starters, and only one is older than a sophomore. Doesn't the center call the blocking for Steve? Center calls the, uh, all the blocking assignments. Second down and nine for Florida. Matthews, little quick pop. Caught by Jackson, Willie Jackson. And he's very, he's got his first down. Derek Oden just could not get enough of him to hold him from the marker, and he wiggled his way past him. This is exactly, exactly what you want to do, though, if you have a young offensive line and an aggressive defensive line, a little slant is three steps, throw it quick. Like We'll be putting a lot of pressure on your offensive line. Two freshmen, two true freshmen, and two sophomores in that offensive line for the Gators. I sat a lot this week and doodled away at the Alabama defense trying to figure out how one would best attack it, and I don't know that much about the game of football, except I kept coming up with that kind of stuff. The kind of thing that uh, Miami runs, for example. So far, Spurrier's had the answer. You got a little running game established early. That helps. On first down, they go back to the run, and uh, not much. Middle of the Alabama defense now, reacting a little bit better to Eric Rett. And that time it was Derek Oden, who is a senior from Tuscaloosa. Here's what we're talking about right here. Alabama leads the nation in every major defensive category. Simply the best defense in the nation. Rest at the 41-yard line at second down and eight. Kevin Randolph is in the backfield now for the Gators. Keller tied in, goes in motion. Matthews back, pressure's coming, dumps it over the middle, got his man open, Randolph, and gets a first down. He takes it across midfield and all the way down to the Alabama 42-yard line. Take a look at the pass protection. 74 in blue is one of the true freshmen. That's Odom against uh, London. Not a, not a bad job. Here's the other freshman, 78. Little twist there. Picks it up pretty nicely. Nice job of pass protection. Shane Matthews on the season now, 3,012 yards. He's the first SEC quarterback to throw for 3,000 twice. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. That time, John Copeland got up there in front of it and slapped it away. 
I would imagine Messrs. Copeland and uh, Curry will find a way before this day's done. Well, they're both seniors. 55 London, got it, London knocked it down, but yeah. both Copeland 94 and Curry 80 are both seniors, and they know they're playing against true freshmen. Combined, those two defensive ends have 40 career sacks. Malone is in now for the Gators. It is second down at 10. Matthews and that ball away to the running back. And just about the time the ball got there, Copeland got there. Watch the center. They're asking the center to block back. Number 52 had no chance. He tried to shake hands with him. That's the substitute center, the backup. That's Swain. When you've got a lineman as quick as Copeland, you can't reach that far and ask the center to do that block. Florida's offense so far, two yards running, 94 yards passing, 7-7 seven, seven tie, two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. And for the Gator, Third down and about 13. Passes away for the tight end Keller. Double coverage on him this time. Passes incomplete. And it brings up a fourth down. As the game wears on, uh, adjustments being made, it begins to change and a little. Spurrier knows, and he's got to convey it to his guys that punting is not bad. Just don't turn it over. Yep. Shane Edge, outstanding punter, averaging 41 yards per kick. David Palmer waits for it. All over him, forced him away from it. Tackling. Alabama gets the football at the Florida 42. There were white shirts everywhere. There are going to be white shirts everywhere. From the right side, 13 is Teague. He would have got it. 10 is Johnson. He's the other defensive back that's in there. This was a true punt. He had nobody to look for to throw the football. 2.05 to go first quarter. SEC titles in the 1991-92 academic year. That's the most in a single season in conference history. That's a successful program. Go back to the punt. Watch these two guys on the outside. You have to get a bigger piece of them. You just can't stick your arm out there with speed like that on the corner. He had no chance. Special team, first break, Alabama. Tide worked on it a lot last couple of weeks. They thought it might prove to be the big thing, and it may very well. Palmer's in there as a wide man with Lassick getting the handoff, and he will pick up about two yards on the carry. But David Palmer is on the field right now, and he had stepped up out of the backfield into a slot position. Minute 45 to go in the first quarter, a 7-7 tie. Alabama, though, with... Uh, the special teams play against the punt, put themselves in position here, perhaps to untie it. There goes Palmer in motion again. Give it to Palmer, coming back the other way, no chance. The Gators were all over it. The blitz, you can't run a reverse on a blitz. Nope. Quarterback needs to get him out of this play. Let it go, but uh, like Bob said, you can't, you can't run a draw play into a blitz, and you can't run a reverse with a blitz. At the conclusion of today's game, Chevrolet most valuable player chosen for each team. 22nd year, the Chevrolet scholarship program has been donating $1,000 to the school scholarship program. General scholarship program. Back goes Parker. He's got a problem. Can't throw it now. He's going to have somebody downfield, but he lets it go anyway to Prince Wembley, number 32. And you've got penalty flags on the field. So you run around that long, your linemen are going to go on downfield. Yep. It's a nice job by Barker to uh, keep something alive. 
Either that or you're going to get holding one or the other. Illegal forward pass. Pass with the on line of scrimmage. Well, that too. <laughs> Lost it on. Fourth down. I saw a lineman downfield, and uh, Barker was across the line, and a uh, bunch of things. So the tide doesn't do anything with the break they made for themselves. They further away a pretty good opportunity, and now they've got to punt it. And so all of a sudden, what appeared to be momentum for the tide goes maybe momentum Gators. This is Monty Duncan, number 81, back there. Ryan Deal's punt. High hanger. Out of bounds. He kicked it away from him, didn't want him. Running the ball back, but he didn't get the ball as deep as he wanted. And they have marked him out of bounds at about the 17. With 17 seconds to go in the first quarter. Climbs up only a 27-yard punt. You know, a punter like that, winded his back a little bit. Hits it that he comes off the sideline and all the stairs are stony straight ahead. Well, it's, <laughs> it's really <laughs> tough to try and kick something inside the 20 with the wind behind yep, you. It is. It certainly is. That old end over end thing is probably the best weapon. Yep. Eric Rett and Kevin Randolph. Line up in the eye. They're double wide bottom of the picture. And Matthews wants to throw. Now does throw. Ball is caught by number 30 out of the backfield. Kelvin Randolph. Picks up about eight or nine yards. The Alabama defensive people are not penetrating on a regular basis, are they? The young people up front for Florida are doing a pretty good job so far. But after one period of play in the first SEC title game, it's all even at seven. Hi, y'all. A tall fellow over there, that's Mr. Greasy. <laughs> this is David Burnson. On my left is Todd Barry. And the temperature is about 47 degrees. It's a brisk day in the city of Birmingham, Alabama. The Florida Gators on the football now. Second down and two. It is at their own 26-yard line. Eric Rett he is the deep back. He has the ball. He finds daylight and gets his first down. So it's at the 33. The Gators have it first down. They are all even at seven with Alabama. The Tide had the ball down on the 4 to 4 to 2 a while ago if you just checked with us. And they couldn't do anything with it. The winner here goes to the Sugar Bowl. There are all kinds of stories tied to that. The day wears on. We'll tell you more about it right now. It's wrecked. To the 35. Each team had the ball two times, two possessions in the first uh, quarter. Look at the uh, rushing yards. Florida with a minus 10, but 103 yards passing in the first uh, quarter. The thing that the turnovers don't show you is that Florida had a punt block or the equivalent thereof, and Alabama had good field position out of it. Florida touchdown goes to Shane Matthews for his 73rd touchdown pass. He flips that ball back to Eric Rett. Looked like the lineman stepped back and uh, on Good his point. foot yep. tripped him, and, but he still. See, there's your senior. That's a senior. He's able to make some uh, to keep the play from being a total disaster. One of the linemen stepped on his foot and wouldn't let him get out of out of uh, behind the center. The Gators. Gators are playing their strength, Keith. They got Matthews yep. and Rhett. Rhett's a junior. He led the conference in rushing last year, and he's caught 103, yard, 103 career passes. They're going with Matthews and Rhett. They've got four wideouts on the field. Run Matthews out of there, but he can't get loose. Copeland, John Copeland got him. And they will punt. I was going to say about uh, Shane Matthews, 73rd touchdown pass, traveled about mm, 20 inches. <laughs> Maybe. About a foot and a half. <laughs> if he gets another one today or later, it will we'll tie uh, Dan Marino, incidentally, at uh, 74 in his career. Shane Edge is back. Last time it wasn't pretty for Shane. Let's see what happens here. And the tide now pull off here. They've only got eight people up there right now. There's a good snap. 
kick is out of there. Their catch called. Penalty flag goes down. Gators crowded him. Gators crowded him. Pete Archie, number six, got too close to him. We got to give him uh, two yards. It'll go as a 30-yard uh, punt and then be reduced in size as a result of the penalty. A 35-yard punt. We're in the second quarter of play, 7-7 time. Seven time. Fair, fair catch. Violation of two yards now. Kicking team. First on 10. Galway. And time taken right here. Twelve twenty-one to go in the first half. Seven-seven tie. Alabama's football. First down after that penalty at their own thirty-eight yard line. David Palmer goes in motion. Ball is handed to Derek Lassick. That's a first down for Alabama. Ben Hanks brought him down. The difference right now, Keith, is the fact that the offensive line for Alabama is all coming back. Take a look at Miles, number thirty-one. That's the fullback again. That's that's uh, Houston. And Houston's got about four or five key blocks already in this ball game. Lassick has carried the ball nine times and picked up 59 yards and a touchdown. And here he goes again. Got to get back into the middle from the 49 over to about the Florida 48. Johnny Church on the tackle. He's a freshman for the Gators out of Fort Myers. You like to talk about the big uglies. The defensive line for the Gators, six of the top seven from last year are not back. Two were injured, two graduated, one was academically ineligible, and one left for the NFL. As you take a look at Ron Zook, the one that left for the NFL was drafted in the second round. The defensive Florida has been outstanding the last five years, but not this year. Second down and seven. This is Palmer trying to get around the corner, and he can't do it. They were all over him. They were looking for him from the get-go. Carlton Miles, the uh, linebacker, just locked on him, almost to the spy roll, and ran him down. Well, when you blitz, when you don't have the people up front, on the front three or four, like Zook does not have, you have to blitz to make some things happen. And the two times he has blitzed today have been very successful. Lost yardage. Well, each time he's, they've been trying to run Palmer. Yep, they reverse. that's right. Maybe they know something. I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> this is Char Anderson. Char uh, Chris Anderson. And Chris Anderson uh, makes something big out of it all the way down to the gate of 46. They've got to go to the 41 for the first down. So they have come up considerably short here. That play tells you the philosophy of Gene Stallings also. Yep. Third and long is not our strength. Don't make a mistake. So they try it. They come up five yards short. And here's the punter deal. With Duncan back there. And deal gets a little better one this time, but it's run down by the Florida Gator Duncan. But he does, he's never able to turn his shoulders upfield at all. They just ride him straight out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. Ten oh one to go in the first half of play. You can see that uh, Mr. Spurrier has done quite well in his three years against Alabama. They won the year before Steve King there. One tick more than ten minutes to go in the first half as Florida takes it first down at their own ten yard line. This ball is handed off to Randolph. Randolph has wrestled down just about the line of scrimmage. Tonight is sort of mysterious here on ABC. First, you got Peter Falk starring in a Colombo movie special, Uneasy, Lies the Crown. Then the commissioner's wife is the only witness to a murder, and she is stalked by the killer. An all-new commish tonight on ABC. Jack Jackson, number one, checks in to go with Willie Jackson, number 22. And the ball off as get off. They became consumed by getting with getting pressure on Matthews, and Eric Rett got loose. This is similar to the play they scored on when Rett ran the little draw. Take a look at Curry up here again. He's going to be upfield. Both ends, in fact, are upfield, and the little draw play is going to go inside. 
these guys, the ends are taking them out of out of the out of the run uh, defense. They're playing pass only. Good block downfield by the wide receiver. And it's first down for the Gators, just short of the 30. That pass is incomplete. Intended for Willie Jackson. And Shane Matthews has now gone to 9,121 yards in 31 games. He passes Tommy Hodson to become the all-timer in the SEC. And it's only fitting that you had a shot of Spurrier because Spurrier has been the brains behind the athleticism of Shane Matthews. The football is resting at the 28-yard line, second down and 10. 7-7 seven, seven time, Matthews pops it away quickly. And the tight end takes a wallop as he goes down in the arms of Tommy Johnson, Greg Keller. Held on to make it a completed pass. Keller missed all of last year with an injury. He is the tight end. They don't throw to their tight ends a lot, but you got to throw to them some to keep the defense honest. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first half of 7-7 time. Third down and three for the Gators. Rhett the single back. He's got it. Pressure coming, they got him, they buried him. There were people back there to slow him down. Sam Shade, the strong safety, turned him in and Copeland just dunked it. Too much speed, just too much speed and experience on the Alabama side and not enough experience in the offensive line for uh, Florida. Fourth and three. man short let's get 11 Florida's got to realize that this offensive series really wasn't bad we didn't turn it over punting is not a bad situation they got it out of deep in their own territory patience Palmer back there takes it up to 24 across the 40 42 probably got a face mask coming yep That'll add 15, because that was a pretty good tug. You could hear the level of expectation, the noise uh, pick up when Palmer got the ball on this punt return. He's returned five punts for touchdowns, as you see right there is the face mask. Five returns for touchdowns for Palmer in two years at Alabama. It's a big one. It goes for 15 yards. 7.21 to play in the first half. For a second time in the ball game, Alabama will start a possession on the floor to 42. Last time they went backwards. 7-7 seven, seven time. The best thing Alabama does offensively in the SEC is not turn the ball over. They are best at holding on to the ball. Palmer's out there as a wide out. Classic is a single back. Marcus passed to Palmer, got it. But in the process of finally getting a handle on it, he was not able to move it upfield, though he did make something of it. Caught him in a blitz. Barker saw the blitz and checked off to a little quick out. Now, they like to get the ball to their receivers. They have some great speed outside as Palmer. Watch the linebackers. Blitzing. Barker read it this time, and he's got the ball outside one-on-one. -on -one. If the ball had been a little lower and David didn't have to have so much trouble to get a hold of it, he might have made some pretty good size out of that. Yep. This is Lassick carrying it on second down and short. And it does not appear that he has made his first down. Next Saturday here on ABC Sports, the senior PGA Tour will be out on the green. The grand finale of 92, money leader Lee Trevino, Ray Floyd, senior open champion Larry Loretta, hometown favorite Chi Chi in Puerto Rico for the senior tour championship for Eastern on ABC. Tarrant Lynch joins Martin Houston in the backfield. 
going for the first down and I don't know if Houston got it. The Gators hunkered down and played it tough. Marquette Oliver number eight in particular had a hit on the play. Now they may have to belly up here and try it on fourth down. Top top left the blue the blue jersey that's Oliver is going to come around pretty good line charge but got stuck down there at the end and Oliver got around. Go to a full house and on third down Anderson trying for the first down and uh, he did not make it. So they I don't think he made it look out for this penalty flag man's dropped a uh, penalty flag. He's just that was, picked uh, it up. It was fourth down. Keith. Uh, fourth down. Yeah. yeah. Did I? I'm sorry. Fourth down. Yeah. Let's see about the flag. Yep. It's going to be against Florida. I think they had. I don't know. Let's see. Might have been too many players on the field. There was some confusion around the play. But whatever, the Gators have made a mistake here, and on they held them on fourth down. Illegal substitution. Defense. Twelve nine, and then not get off the field. They're not participate. And Five now that penalty. brings a very pained down. expression to Steve Spurrier's face. Well, you know, talking with him yesterday, he said we can't help them score. We can't give them nope. easy plays. This is a turnover right here. Yep. They had them stopped. It would have been offense for Florida. Instead, it is first down Alabama. The ball at the Gator 28-yard line with five minutes and 29 seconds to play in the first half of a 7-7 time. Palmer goes in motion. Here they come. And they got it. Aaron Lasik right into a blitz. Campbell, Mark Campbell, 67. Here are the linebackers, right? Here's one. Here's another one out here. In addition to the four defensive linemen coming, the linebackers come, messes up the blocking assignments, and when Ron Zook, the defensive coordinator, has blitzed, good things have happened for Florida, but you just can't do it every time. Second down and 12. Pass to the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Curtis Brown. very often to throw the ball just a great play hatch number 18 misses it big play for Alabama through the air Proctor for the point Good. so an illegal substitution penalty after they had stopped it gives Alabama another chance and they score it to take the lead the Alabama scoring drive numbers with Brown making a terrific catch in the end zone. Take a look at the quarterback now. Watch the safety, number two at the top. Barker looks to the right. The safety looks moves to the right. Moves to the right, looks right. Now he throws back to the left. That's the free safety. You're supposed to get some help. Brown ran a nice route. Take a look at it from ground level. Looking, looking away, looking away. They know what they're doing. Will White, fifth year senior in the middle of the field for the Gators. And Alabama takes the lead on that play, 14 to seven with 449 to play in the first half. Buckner hits it. Houston and Jack Jackson waiting at Houston. Blocking by Florida to move the football up across the 25-yard line. And Tommy Johnson, who is the nickelback, finally ran him down. That's a penalty against Alabama, offside on the kickoff. The return on the play by Houston was 19 yards. Gene Stallings. I came, I got up this morning and put on a nice warm lamb's wool sweater about that color and decided I'd better not wear it because I might have to go back to Gainesville. <laughs> <laughs> Stallings 
Stallings is 36th year in coaching. This year he's been, 10 of those has been as a head coach. His third year as a head coach at Alabama. He was also at Texas A&M for Alabama seven years. Five yards outside on the kickoff and will kick again from the 30. So while uh, Gene Stallings is dapper in uh, coat and tie, Steve, more contemporary perhaps, in the sweatsuit. It's his ninth type. year as a head coach. Because, he was yeah. three years here at Florida. He was three at Duke, and then he was three years a head coach of the Tampa Bay Bandits, the USFL. Florida wants them to kick it over. So they will come back and do it from the 30. That will move Jack Jackson and uh, uh, Harrison Houston. They should come up to about the 10, maybe even the 15. Because the ball does not seem to be carrying. It's about a 13 to 15 mile an hour win. And I think there were whirls around inside this big bowl, and it just simply doesn't look like it carries very much. So now from the 30. do it but he'll, uh, he'll have about an 18 yard return out to the 35 yard line so a uh, prudential halftime report we will show you the bands and we have a feature on uh, the rebel quarterbacks of Bama and uh, perhaps even more importantly a special report from ABC News on the movement of US troops again Florida gained seven yards on the re-kick and from the 35, first down, Matthews fakes it, keeps it, throws it. Solid hit over on that side of the field. The pass was caught by Houston. And Tommy Johnson at number 10, the nickelback, he's made some cracking good hits today. Number 10, Johnson, you've seen him a little bit. Take a look at it from the reverse angle. It's going to be coming right at you. Johnson, number 10, can't even get on the field normally. He is the third cornerback for Alabama. He is playing behind two all-conference corners who lead the league in interceptions. Langham and Teague. Red is the single back. Ball is slapped down, and number 55, Antonio London, just planted Shane Matthews. The man in the white closest to you is London, 55. Nobody blocks him. It's a young offensive line, as we mentioned. Mistake there. Can't take too many licks like that. No. Third down and six. We've got Matthews on the run. Pass is away and incomplete. Houston was the only man that had a chance at it. The pursuit was uh, number 73, Jeremy Nunley, 260-pounder out of Winchester, Tennessee, and he was really pounded. And there was nobody open downfield. Alabama playing tight man-to-man -man coverage and rushing Matthews. Nobody to throw to. And at 342 to go in the first half, Palmer goes back for Bama and Shane Edge for the Gators. That's a pretty good kick. Palmer goes back to his 15, coming around, looking for the block, got one, needed one more. Comes back to the 18-yard line, and there Alabama will go to work. That's a fine punt by Shane Edge of 44 yards and only a three-yard return. So far today, Florida has not let themselves get bunched into the middle of the field. They did that against Florida State last week and got burned. At the time, 18. So put Chris Anderson in the backfield now for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Give the ball to the fullback to Houston. Move him out to about the 24-yard line. Let's go ahead and run this. Let's go back, let you play a quarterback for Florida. 
Go ahead and start the play. Look downfield to the receivers now. See if you see anybody else. Now he wants to throw. Stop it right there. There ain't nobody open. You see all the receivers are covered. Now, that's all, that's all you need to know, that when he was ready to throw, nobody was open. Anderson, the single back, second down and four. There's a one I think that may well go on the, on Bama. That Alabama man may have bobbed up and down a bit. Full Let's start see. offense. Ball before the snap. Full start. Yep. Offense. Tight end move. Repeat second down. It's a tight end busky. Closest to us right there. Just can't get back. Just forgot the snap count. Now, how, how does that happen? Now, eh? you're thinking about your blocking assignment when you go up to the line of scrimmage, and the tackle makes a call that changes your blocking assignment, and all of a sudden you say, geez, what was the, what was the snap count? Well, Alabama's gotten a little careless. They made some careless mistakes here in the last uh, couple of possessions. They lead in the ball game 14-7. There's a little shovel pass that goes to Anderson, but uh, he can't do much with it. Picks up about two yards, so they'll be looking now at third down at about six. number 60, Henry McMillan, and number 57, Kevin Carter. Two-yard gain on the play, third and seven at the Alabama 21. The game was advertised as a sellout. Some numbers there having to do with uh, Gene Stallings, who played for Paul Bryant out at a &E. Right. In fact, I think it's Gene that had that comment, wasn't it? That we went out to Junction City on two buses. We came back on one, and it wasn't full. Cool. <laughs> Tough running inside. Barker is a 209 pounder, so he's 6'3. He's not a gimme. Patterson, the right tackle. So look at that Gator defense. They play an eight man front. Miles, number 31, on a little blitz. That's what causes the confusion. And Gunter ran right by the play. If he doesn't run by it, he was in position to make a big play, but here comes Patterson off the field now. They are not deep. Alabama is not deep in the offensive line. They have six guys that can play, but they're a lot deeper, a lot stronger than Florida in their offensive line. So they're now looking at fourth down and two, and they're not going to mess with it. They're going to get it out of there as uh, Brian Deal comes into the ball game. Gene is having a spirited conversation. One of the official. He's got cotton in his ears. Gene, he can't <laughs> hear you. <laughs> you know, that the, the only the line judge and the side judge is over there near the coaches. They're the, they're the only ones that wear the, the cotton. <laughs> This is Duncan. Well, that's a little bit like a tree falling on you when you get five of those guys jumping your bones, but it's a 51-yard punt. He did return it five yards for a net of 46, a 14-7 Alabama lead at 127 to go in the first half. This is a look at uh, Alabama defensively this year. Only 57 yards per game rushing. That's just a little bit over one yard per rush. And here's what Florida has done today. Minus four yards rushing. Bet the single back. Eric is a very good receiver. They stop him. I don't know why. There was time left on the 25-second clock, so let's wait and see what Rum Gilbert tells us. The gentleman who was born on the shores of Lake Superior. It's a movement call against Florida. Ball before the snap. Ball start. Illegal movement. Oh, man. Offense. Still first down. T. Dean there, that's Tommy Dean. He's going to be, at least he seems to be, the quarterback heir apparent for this Florida team. Terry Dean, not Tommy, Terry. Sophomore out of Naples. John Copeland.
His colleague Eric Curry was also there. Uh, Copeland and Curry, we mentioned both of the All-American defensive ends, and one of the problems the Gators are having, their center, Grant uh, Crouch, is out of the game. They're starting center with an injury. Matthews, 12 of 17, 132 yards. This is a wreck. Big play. Big run. But still not a first down because of the penalty and the loss. They had a long way to go. It's third and 20. He got 15 of it, so they need five. have run that draw play or something similar <laughs> 10 times in the first half the little <laughs> shovel pack because of the ends coming up field on their pass rush the lanes are inside all of Alabama's defensive strength rests on the outside of their defensive alignment 14 seconds to go fourth and two with 14 seconds to play in the first half is this a trick play time well, it, no, it's not a trick play time, but it's a great time to try and block a punt. Well, they got 10 up there. Number 10 got pretty close to it. That's Johnson. Palmer. Yeah, the Duke got in by the first two, but there were too many blue shirts on the way downfield. A 38-yard punt, a 10-yard return. You've got two seconds to play. Yeah, Palmer was by himself on that one because they were trying to block it and uh, they had no return set up at all. So Alabama will get one snap from their own 36-yard line. Obviously, Palmer is wide. Parker lets it go. Palmer's down the middle, tackled at the 35-yard line of Florida. The half is over. And halfway through it, Alabama 14 and Florida 7. The Gators made a mistake, gave Alabama a first down. And on the very next play, they threw it into the end zone. Brown made a great catch from Barker, and that's the difference in the ball game. Now here is an announcement from Chevrolet's Jeff Hurlburt. The SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. And by Diet Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper butler. Diet Dr. Pepper, the taste you've been looking for. Downtown Birmingham, Alabama, side of the inaugural Southeastern Conference Championship game presented by Dr. Pepper on ABC Sports College Football. It is 14-7 Alabama. We're ready to go with the second half as David Palmer will wait back there in the middle. Back with him will be Chris Anderson and Sherman Williams. And Ryan Ruland will kick it off for the Florida Gators. Don't want to kick it to Palmer. Kick it short. It is covered at the 32-yard line by Jeff Foshi, an Alabama linebacker. Here are the halfway numbers. Plays uh, in favor of Florida, 35 to 26. Look down the rushing yardage, 79 for uh, Alabama, pretty good balance, 88 yards passing, but Florida only nine yards rushing. Turnovers, about the same. Possessions for Alabama, they got the ball a couple of times in Florida's territory. Barker is five of five. Lassick leads the rushers. Here's the first snap of the second half. Give it to Derek Lassick. Penalty flag goes down as Lassick wiggles in behind the right guard and picks up about two yards. David Palmer, I think, might have been moving up the field. 
And so that's the call against the Tide. They start with a five yard mistake and the coach is getting cranky. That is the fifth penalty on Alabama. Take a look at this graphic, Keith. This is the only quarter that Alabama has been outscored in all year. They declined the penalty. They only gained a yard. So on second and nine, they throw the ball quickly outside to Kevin Lee. First time that Lee has seen the ball today. He made the catch and picked up a short gain on the play. And they'll be looking third and about five. And Lee is the sprinter. He is a 4-2, uh, 40-yard dash man, and he is outstanding speed. He comes out, however, along with Curtis Brown, the man who caught the touchdown pass from Barker. Put Derek Lassick behind Barker in a single back, put David Palmer back into the ball game. basically have what amounts to a no back set and Barker hums one throws it behind Palmer David had no real chance to make the catch Larry Kennedy was over there defending and it'll bring up fourth down a little off target they were blitzing again and if the ball is on the money Palmer could do something with it watch as he's going to have to turn to the inside of the field a little high a little inside and with Kennedy's uh, uh, attack he dropped the ball, football Fourth kick of the day coming up for punter Brian Deal. His last one was a 51 yarder. Monty Duncan will go back deep for the Gators. No pressure. Didn't get it to turn. Duncan comes up on the move, takes it at the 30. Hops out of there, gets to the 40. And returns to the 43. That's a good workmanlike return by Monty Duncan. 33-yard punt, but a 14-yard return. Good field position for Florida. They haven't had real good field position. First possession of the game, they scored. The next uh, five times they had it, they punted. That one on downs, really, he tried to punt, and it was a mis uh, mishandled. Matthews is 12 of 17. He's carried him along with Rhett. Rhett, with 14 rushes, has been the leading rusher. This is Florida's best starting possession position. A quick over there for the screen to Willie Jackson. And sliding under him and forcing him out of bounds is Antonio Langham for Alabama. Just starting the second half of play with the Crimson Tide leading Florida 14 to 7. Steve will uh, give the uh, play to one of the uh, players on the sideline and they will wag the plays into the quarterback. Steve used to do it himself. Danny Werfel, one of the, the, the backup quarterbacks is the man that signals it in. Matthews back. Good protection. Nobody open, so he pulls it down and moves close to his first down. About a yard short is Jeremy Nunley, number 73, makes the tackle. Now let's check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Keith, Coach Steve Spurrier told his Gators that they had just as much of a turnover when they had that problem that resulted in the seven points by Alabama in the first half. I asked him if he was going to change his game plan in this half. He said they're going to try and go longer with some of their passes than they did in the first half. Look for that. Thank you, Jack. Lomansky Hall comes off the field. Looks like an ankle problem. He's a valuable man. He is their leading tackler, Keith. Uh, he has had an outstanding year. He's out for the time being. Gators dive into the middle of the stack, trying for their first down. And it just simply depends on the mark. I don't think he got it. I don't think he moved. I may, may have lost some yardage. Alabama's called a timeout. With 12.33 to play in the third quarter. Let's go back. These uh, 
Two players right here are trying to get the attention of one of the officials to call timeout before that last third down play. And finally, he gets it, and it's still third down. Third down and a short two. They will try the pass this time. Get it away, and the pass is complete, and that's a very good play by Matthews. Eric Curry was looking at him, had him in his sights, and the pass is caught by Charlie Dean, and the first down. Well, Shane Matthews makes the play, and, 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 and third and short. They had just run a quarterback sneak, play action pass. He's going to have the tight end come across the field. And if you want somebody to go against the best defense in the nation, try a fifth-year senior who has led the conference in passing the last three years. Curry number 80 is going to be right in his face. Two-time player of the year in the conference. On first down, they run it with Eric Rett. Rett will go down after a couple of yards. Antonio Langham making the tackle. They're working on Lemansky Hall, Jack. And you update us on Hall. Go ahead, Jack. Well, Keith, let me update you on Lemansky Hall. Right behind us, they're working. They wouldn't let us get very close to him. He has sprained his right ankle. I asked the doctors if they were going to let him go back in and play. They said they won't know. They're going to keep him out for a few series. Second down and eight for Florida. The ball is on the Alabama side of the field now. Start of the second half. Curry getting some heat. And down he goes. Pursuit is 55. Antonio London, who got his hands on him. And Jerry Nunley was right there in case he missed him. Big old Jeremy's been running around hard all day. He well, hasn't quite caught up yet. He doesn't normally play on base defense. He plays <laughs> when they come in on the pass. You'll see him from the left, number 73, a little twist, a little game. Now, if you're wondering why Matthews doesn't throw it away, there's nobody over there to throw it to. The play was designed to go to the left, and he rolled out to the right. He couldn't throw it away. And so bring it back, way back, make it third down and 21 that, for that's, Florida. That's a drive ender right there. Yep. Here's that little flip. Goes to the running back, and he takes off up the middle. And once again, there's a good gain on the play, but they had so much to pick up. They just simply couldn't get all of that. But the that's drive the same, is stopped. Same play they scored on. Yeah. They you know, sometimes that times. develops just in practice from just fooling around, just throwing the ball around. Yep. Palmer still waiting to break something big for Alabama. Shane Edge is back. Oh, that's all of it. Edge knocks it deep. 48 yards, well into the end zone. 10.47 to go, third quarter. <laughs> 14 to 7, Alabama leads Florida. The Crimson Tide in white. They are the visiting team in this game. Florida the home team. Ball is on the 20 after the kick into the end zone. Palmer's the man in motion. Pitch it back to Lassick. And he's got a yard. Tried to get a little misdirection. He started right, went back left, and Ellis Johnson's having none of it and took him down. Making the top number 61, Ellis Johnson. All right, here comes number 37, Kevin Lee, back into the ball game along with Brown. Lee, as Bob pointed out a minute ago, the sprinter, the fast man, but he's only seen the ball once. They use their wide receivers to shuttle the plays in and out. Split backs, give it to the big man, uh, Houston. And he's up to the 25. Stop on the play, number 31, Charles Defile. One of the ways that they're trying to stop this running game is by blitzing their linebackers, and they've done a pretty nice job of it. Only 79 yards coming into the second half. Alabama averages 216 yards per game on the ground. But Alabama leads 14 to 7. Mistakes, mistakes. The old Wallace Wade line. Nobody ever wins a football game. Somebody loses it. Back goes Parker. Heats on. Runs away from it. No, can't get away from it. Johnny Church ate him up. Good job, good Good job, Good 
may decide to continue the blitz on every down because it's been working. Outside here, watch the linebackers. All these guys are going to be coming. There's an eight-man front anyway. Pressure defense, and Barker is sacked. And Alabama's punting. With Deal back in, and Duncan deep. Low, spins, pretty good kick. Duncan has a little room. Runs out of it. About a three-yard return. 47-yard punt. Matthew Pine, the first man to him. And so Florida goes back to the attack. We have the College Football Awards tomorrow presented by uh, Subway. That's live at 3 Eastern Time, 2 Central and Pacific. We'll also have the Coalition Bowl rundown. Get that bowl situation all straightened up for everybody, right? Maybe. It may <laughs> take more than a day to do that. <laughs> it may take more than a day. Uh -huh. From the 37 now, let's see what happens with Rhett, the single back, double wide, top of the screen. The tight end is down to the bottom. Matthews throws to the right. Antonio Langham sensed that play coming. Number 43 came up, had a look, and then drifted back. Pass completed to uh, Trey Everett, and he's knocked out of bounds by Langham. Now that bowl business is all predicated on the AP Top 10. The coalition will uh, select their teams uh, in, in order of the, uh, the placement of the top 10 teams there. Now it gets more confusing than that, but you just need to know it's based on the AP poll. Eric Rett with a good run. Very good blocking on the corner by Florida to get Rett around the corner, and he picks up a first down and then some, putting the ball over at the Alabama 46-yard line. Yeah, and regardless, the winner of this game will go to the Sugar Bowl. That is one thing we can certainly tell you. Jack Jackson, bottom of the picture. Willie Jackson, top. Matthews back, looks at Willie, lets it go, got him. So the junior from Gainesville makes the catch, and it's a first down for Florida, and the Gators have a threat going. Chris Donnelly made the tackle for Alabama. Well, that's a great throw. He's right here. He's going to come down, and he's going to be in between these two defensive backs into the short side of the field. The wide guy stops, and Matthews just throws it in between the other two. This is uh, remindful of the first drive of the ball game. Florida hasn't moved this well since. First down, 26-yard line. Pressure coming, backside, pass is lowered away. 55 London was coming from the weak side. And perhaps Matthews sensed him and let it go well, and missed his man. It's a good point, Keith. He's going to be chasing. London is going to be chasing him. But a, a fifth-year senior has thrown a lot of passes, throws this one away as much as anything else because he knew there was two DBs out there right uh, in, the, in position to possibly intercept if he'd thrown it to the receiver. Mark it on the 27. I think I said 26. Clearly on the 27 now that we get a view of it. it away and it is incomplete and Matthews is down hard. Trey Everett the intended receiver. Again we talked about this young offensive line. There's freshmen everywhere. Right tackle and left. It's amazing that he gets his ball off. That was considerate of London too wasn't it? Yeah it was. He could have whopped him one but he didn't. for the Gators. There's a blitz. Got him. George T. When they're lined up four across, 
and not very deep. You better watch out. Here's Teague right here. Watch him come in. Nobody's near him, unblocked. Matthew sees him coming late. Field goal try coming. It is prodigious. 51 yards by Judd Davis. Pretty much on track, but it's a good five, six, seven yards short. Score remains 14-7 Alabama, 6.47 to go, third quarter. Antonio London got up, trotted off the field on his own. When you have had four blocked field goals in your career, you probably get a little hungry. Yeah, and he was trying to block another one. He was way up in the air and just came down wrong. Field goal try was short. Chris Anderson settles into the backfield now with Martin Houston for Alabama as they take over up on the 35-yard line. And Parker wants to go deep for Palmer. And he caught it. The little man makes things happen. First down, Alabama, the Florida 27. Well, watch this. It's a little hitch and go. One, two, three, four, five. Stop. Kennedy bites. And now it's a foot race. Kennedy really has pretty good coverage, but this ball is thrown perfectly by Barker. Seven of eight, 128 yards for Jay Barker. Coach got stepped on. 27-yard <laughs> <laughs> line. Lassick is back in the lineup for Alabama now. Gators hunker down. They trail by seven. Lassick for the ball. Whoa. Got a little bit of a move in front of Kennedy. Kennedy got a hind leg as he went by. Otherwise, Lassick might have really stuck it deep. Gain on the play is close to 10 yards. It'll be nine and second down and short. He's got a report that Antonio London just got the wind knocked out of him. He'll be back in. Alabama has a sneaky passing attack, Keith. They throw when it's, uh, when it's convenient for them. And they don't, well, they don't like to throw third and long. Give it to the big fullback, Houston. And he just pounds in there and gets it down close to the 15, and that will be a first down. That's called jawbone football. Chicago Bears, Houston Oilers from the Dome. Live at 9 Eastern time on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Houston 7-5 and five in the AFC Central. Time to win one for them. Bears having a hard time this year. Yes, they are. They're struggling. First down snap. Back to Lassick. Good blocking on the corner. Touchdown, Alabama. drives him back. He's downfield. Plus he got uh, showing off a little too soon. He almost got caught, but he got it in the end zone. Here's the kick by Proctor. Penalty flag thrown. The kick is good. If there is a penalty, I think it'll come back and uh, quite possibly, well, let's see. This is hold on and see. It's against uh, Alabama, so they're, they're going to back them up. Face mask. Houston reached out and got somebody. And if they call it a big one, that'll, uh, that's 15 yards. Foul called against Alabama. Unusual call. They're going to put some challenge in this one. That'll be Houston, the fullback up on Look the... Look to the right side. Number uh, number 35 in blue going around. Number 35 grabs him. Number one in the round. Right there. So here's the extra point try now from the 30. 
That's 40 yards. Here's another penalty flag. That might be an offside against the Gators. Ball before the snap. Ball nope. start. Ball start Off by end. Alabama. Five yard penalty. So oh, add another five yards. Now you got a 45-yard extra, extra point try. The longest one, maybe, <laughs> in the history of the uh, <laughs> certainly, certainly in the championship game of the SEC, it's the longest. Well, we know that Proctor's career-long field goal is 47 yards. This is a 45-yard extra point. He just squeezed it over. I mean, that's not even by the hair of your chinny-chin-chin. Chin. That was just a half a whisper. But it's over. And it counts. And he's a true freshman also. Let's go back to the touchdown. Watch the block out here. Patterson on Hanks as the play is going to go around the right end. That offensive line, all five starters on the offensive line returned this year for uh, Alabama. And it's now 21 to 7, Alabama leads. The number two team in the nation trying to win their way to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Trying to win their way into a game against the Hurricanes of Miami. And that it would set up number one against number two, according to the AP poll. Your attention, please. Keith Walter. Keith Walter, please come to the press box. Keith Walter, please come to the press box. Oh, no. Please go to the main first aid station, gate 7 Please go to the main first aid station, gate 7 Big L having a time in Birmingham's Legion Field as Alabama goes 66 yards. The big play was the pass. Barker to Palmer. Big play was the first play. Yep. Proctor hangs it up. Over at the 14-yard line to Houston. He's had them all today. And he's wrestled down. Each time, however, he's done a very good job. He's put the Florida Gators up across the 30-yard line again. So the idea is to kick it in the left corner to cut down on the return area that the Gators have. And he's done that every time. 5.06 to play in the third quarter. Sun gone, temperature dropping, but it's dry. First down, Matthews. Let's it go down the middle. Got a tight end there. Keller. And it's a big play to midfield. And first down, Gators move the chains. Alabama has not been able to keep them pinned up on their side of the field of the ball game. Well, the play action holds the linebackers as the tight end is going to get in behind them. They've run this play successfully. The draw, Rodgers bites on it, and a nice throw by Matthews. Big first down play, gets him moving. This is Rhett. A little draw up the middle. Worked all day long. That's another first down for Florida. That play, as you said, Keith, has worked all day long. The wide stuff is no good. Too much speed for Alabama. But you run upside, inside, the draw and the trap inside has been a very good play. Rhett now with 50 yards on 17 carries. Lemansky Hall is not on the field right now for Alabama. They miss him. Neither is London. Shane Matthews throws. Pass complete to Randolph. He's taken down at the 32. That's a gain of uh, about five. Saturday on ABC Sports. Next Saturday. The Senior Tour. PGA Senior Tour and its finale of 92. You got all the big boys there and they're going to go down and play at Chi Chi's hometown in Puerto Rico. The Senior Tour Championship at 4 Eastern Time on ABC Sports and I'd pay to watch it. Second down and five. Again, hole over the middle. Man's available and it's close to a first down to ret the running back out of the backfield. Good receiver. Sam Shade made the hit. Sam Shade. 
That's over 110 receptions for Rhett in his career. We get word that Lemansky Hall, Keith, has got a uh, Achilles tendon injury and will not be back the rest of the game. Gone for the game. Wow. Yep. Into the middle on third down and two. And I don't think he quite reached it. I think it's London who may not. Uh, no. London's out there. I see Lemansky him. Hall. Excuse me. Lemansky Hall. Lemansky yeah. Hall's got the. Yeah. London's out there. Well, London's been everywhere. London has been the beneficiary of lining up over the right uh, tackle. That's true freshman Jason Odom, and he's uh, he's been everywhere today. Drove the bus. You got the Jacksons up at the top. Jack and Willie. No relation. They throw it to Willie, and it's short, but it's good enough for the first down. See, that's what a man, uh, the, the head coach was a passing quarterback, Florida's only Heisman winner. Yep. He has no fear of going to the short passing game to get his first down. That's exactly right. And when you give him that much room, you can certainly pick it up. 21 to 7, Alabama leading, two minutes and 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. The inaugural SEC championship game. Matthews, 21 of 28, 205 yards so far. Young man from Pascagoula, Mississippi. Hands it off to Eric Rett. Running all day, all the way down to the 10 he goes. And it's another first down for Florida. So that handoff to Eric Rett, the running back, as the quarterback comes back looking pass, it's just been dynamite all day. That's that same little shovel flip. pass. Little shovel pass. Yep. Eric Rett, he led the uh, conference in rushing last year. This year, he's fifth in rushing and third in receptions. He can do it all. Balls oh, down around the 10. There's the same play. He gets loose in the middle. He's inside the five. You know, Keith, sometimes the way that play starts is you're just fooling around in practice, and you just go back and you just kind of shovel it to it. Now, that's not when 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 you're running your offense, but maybe you're, when you're running somebody else's plays or something, you're just goofing around, and that's the way some of these things develop. And it certainly worked today. Wow. Into the end zone, touchdown, Florida, Willie Jackson. defense looked confused through almost that entire possession for the Gators and they took it right to the end zone. It's going to be coming right at you. London 55 on a blitz. It's a little slant from the outside and Matthews gets it to him on Teague before he gets uh, inside too far. Judd Davis for the point try. It's good. It's good. Drive, Spurrier calling the plays, Matthews and Rhett moving it down there. There you go down here, he's just going to run a quick little slant as the, everybody is blitzing and it's cleared out on the left side. Matthews sees it, one step, and throws it before he gets into the middle linebacker area where he'd be a problem throwing it around the linebacker. And so welcome back to our little party of anxiety you <laughs> Alabama they had taken a deep breath uh, but the Gators are resourceful well the first defense for Gene Stallings the, the, the first team defense for Stallings had only given up five touchdowns all year now they've given up two in, uh, in almost three quarters here to the Gators Shane Matthews in that possession seven of seven and accounted for 56 of the yards. If you can throw the ball, you've got a chance. I mean, they they can throw it. They've got an offensive line with two freshmen, two sophomores. They're missing their center. But if you can throw it, you got a chance. Down the middle, they still don't want to kick the ball to Palmer. It's bobbled around just a little bit. Picked up by Craig Harris, a fullback. And Harris gets some uh, return out of it up around the 35, 36-yard line. So Bama will have pretty good starting position. 
Our crowd for this inaugural championship game today, pretty good. 83,091. Those two rushes on that last drive were key. Those two draw plays. That's not really the Utah shuffle pass either, the shovel pass that we've seen so many times. It's even a little shorter than that, a little quicker. It's a sister of. Sister of, yes, cousin at least. All right, Alabama comes up. You've got Sherman Williams in the backfield now for the Tide. Got a pair of fresh legs in there. Parker wants to throw on first down and throws down the pipe. Wembley, and it's too high. Wembley had a half a step on Kennedy, and Kennedy's the man they've been throwing at a lot today. Yeah, he had a great shot there. He's Barker's made some great throws today, but this is one he really should have had because he had blitzers come and watch the guys here as the blitzer going to come. He's going to have man-to-man -man coverage on the outside with the middle of the field open. Every blitzer is picked up. If he throws that ball more to the inside, he may still be running. Yep. Wembley is now in involved in his 47th regular season game. Played a lot in Alabama. Williams, a single back. Parker slips, almost falls down, and will go down at about the 36. So that's a bit of an ungainly play there. He apparently was looking for somebody to break free, but no chance. Well, one of the reasons they rolled him out was to get a little bit more time away from the Florida Blitz. The inside backer uh, had a shot at it, but it was actually Ellis Johnson, the tackle, that got him. David Palmer in this game now has caught four balls for 95 yards, which is his career high, and he's at the top of the picture. Parker has to get rid of it in a hurry. It gives it to Williams, and Williams is going to have a first down. I mean, they were blitzing, and uh, he got rid of that ball very well. It was Kevin Carter coming after him. Well, it's a little screen. Watch the center and maybe the left tackle slide to our left. There goes Shields, 51. Now you got two linemen out there. They get some pretty good blocks, and you pick up enough for a first down. Nice, safe play. 48-yard line. Third quarter is over. 21-14 Alabama. We'll be back after this message and the word from our ABC station. The football rests at the 48-yard line of Alabama. The Crimson Tide and the white suits. They lead 21-14. And here's your final quarter. Anderson is in the backfield, along with Houston. Parker pumps it, lets it go. Palmer's out there. Couldn't quite get it. There was pretty good contact between Palmer and a defender as he turned up field. Might have been White, and it seemed to interrupt the run. Well, the same situation. A blitz, man-to-man -man coverage. It's Hatch. It's going to be a little out this time and a little up. Last time it was a hitch and go. There's the bump right yep. there that interrupted him. Hatch doesn't see the ball. Palmer almost makes the play. That's Will White getting over there at the end. So it's second down and 10 from the 48. In this league, you can jam them if they're not beyond you. You got Brown as a wide out now. He's going down the left side. Throw it underneath him to Palmer. And Palmer is caught by White and brought down. Florida has dominated in the number of plays second line total yardage is about the same and uh, surprisingly Alabama is passing for more yardage than they're rushing Palmer and Brown come off the field now and uh, Kevin Lee is in at the top of the picture he's the speedster Everybody up there from Florida. Homer to the sidelines is incomplete. The receiver 
Wembley had slipped and fallen down. Oh, he was literally on his hands and knees, and when he came up, a hard ball is thrown through it. Well, Ron Zook, the defensive coordinator, is putting his corners out on an island with the wide receivers, putting the pressure on the weaker area. There's Zook. He's blitzing, putting his corners. Say, you cover these wide guys, and we'll put the pressure on Barker. In to punt his deal. Duncan is deep. Kicking into the wind. Wind just turned it around and took it right out of bounds. So here's Florida now with very good field position after a 16 yard punt by Deal. And it may, it, we may have be coming up here on one of those critical possessions. Watch this ball. Take this sideways. Yeah. Look a little mine when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly missed the tire, didn't you? Roll them out there. <laughs> All right. Florida's ball, first down from the 31. Shane Matthews steps out of bounds. Up around the 34. Nobody to throw the ball to. Well covered in the second there. The Alabama defense seemed off balance. When Florida on this last possession took it down and scored. Yep. And Matthews has not made many bad decisions today. He's got a master sending him some plays on the sideline in Spurrier. 24 of 31. He's over 200 and well, he's right at 230 yards. And he has been the offense. He and Rhett. Second down and six. Pressure from Rogers. Matthews gets his pass away. It's thrown away. Incomplete. It was Odin that really broke loose up the middle. Both of them loose. Number 56. Linebacker inside. Linebacker blitz. They're only sending four. Three linemen and one linebacker. So that's not an all-out blitz. Alabama doesn't blitz. No. no, they don't. They'll send four guys. They'll send the linebacker. Kind of mix it up. Kind of fool you. Ritz back in the backfield is a single back. It is third and six. They've been able to make Matthews move around the last two plays, and that's incomplete. That was thrown underneath for Ritt and covered by uh, Chris Donnelly, number 21. Donnelly is the free safety. And so it is fourth down. 21-14, Alabama leads 13-35 to play in the game. David Palmer, going back. Shane Edge will hit it. Antonio Langham fields back, so does Teague. High hanger has to go to his knees to make the catch at the 30-yard line, a 35-yard point, no return, and a timeout. And it's a seven-point Alabama lead. The Alabama coach on the left talking to his offensive coordinator, Mal Moore. Steve Spurrier on the right. He is Florida's offensive coordinator. Alabama comes up first down at their own 30-yard line, and Sherman Williams is in the backfield with Houston. Lassick hasn't played in some time. And there's contact. You know, Alabama, as we'll get the call here, I'll just uh, wait a minute. Time to play the snap. Ball start, left guard. Another one on Alabama. Alabama is playing at home. This is uh, one of their home fields, number 68. The left guard is Wilson. But they're the ones that are making the mistakes, not the visiting team, the Gators. I know that they're for this game, they're a home team, but uh, this is the home field for, I think in the last 10 years that Alabama has played football, they've had 28 home games here. 
There's a run with Williams. And that will not get it done. It's a two-yard pickup. There's a crowd of 83,091, and I would suggest to you that at least 60,000 of these people, at least that, yeah. probably more, probably more like 70,000, are pro Alabama. Yeah, that's, that, I would guess that'd be true. But then why not? It's scarcely an hour drive down the road to Tuscaloosa, and uh, half the population, at least half the population of this city has some association with Alabama. Florida shows blitz. They don't. Parker throws down the middle. No, no. Pratt, Wembley could not come up with it. The pass was low. And let's check in with Jack Aroot. Keith, last night at their team meeting, the Florida Gators were distributed a very special sticker. It says simply, we believe. And they do believe that they can win this SEC championship game. Another point in that in this quarter, they've been hanging around showing these to each other and getting very excited on the sidelines. Another point to remember, Keith, in all the years since Steve Spurrier has been head coach, when they've worn the blue jerseys, they're undefeated. Well, Spurrier was saying uh, last night, too, that that uh, the, the next five years, or including this one, the championship game is going to be played right here in Birmingham, and they're going to have to come up here and win a game here if they want to win the championship, and this might be the year. Since we've got to win a game, why not this year? So of course, that's just the way he thinks. That's Wembley, the man that tried so hard for the pass. He was shaken up and has to come off the field. And it is third down. And about 13 yards to go. Parker throws to Williams. And he gets whipsawed pretty good. I think about seven Gators hit him before they were finally through. And it'll bring up fourth down. Gators are selling out to yep. stop the run. Yep. Says if you're going to beat us, Alabama, you've got to do it through the air. And they, you just, I, I'm a long way from the field, I understand that, but you just sort of get the feeling that it's uh, Florida that's gaining a little mold here. Well, they still have to go against the best defense in the right. country. Monty Duncan waiting. They should get pretty good field position out of this. Deal last time just jerked one out of bounds for 16 yards, so he needs a good one here. Well, he didn't get that one either. Pretty bad kick. Didn't get much of a roll. Florida is going to have the football first out at their own 47-yard line. That was a 21-yard. <laughs> Tomorrow, the Subway College Football Awards, live at 3 Eastern time. They'll cover the Maxwell, the Alpham, and more. The Heisman is not involved. And you'll get some definition of the bold coalition matchups for the sugar, orange, cotton, fiesta, and citrus. And ah, uh, comes the golf, the J.C. Penny Classic, at 4 Eastern time tomorrow on ABC Sports. First down, and they put that ball up close to the midfield when they finally marked it. It's the best starting position of the ball game for Florida. That catch is made by Willie Jackson, and the Gators get nine on the play, and it's second and short coming up, and Alabama's got a problem right now. Well, there's no question that uh, Shane Matthews and the Florida offense are on a roll. Not only that, but uh, their special teams for Alabama, the punter, has been having problems the last two punts. 16 yards and 21 yards. And Florida is, is at least on the front step, if not near in the front porch. The nickel defense package is in there. They throw it short underneath the red out of the backfield, and that's the first down for the Gators at the Alabama 36-yard line. 11-23 to play in the game. Well, 21-14, Alabama. Just Excuse mentioned me, to you folks who are watching out there whether or not you think they may go for two. If there is a tie, and Spurrier and, uh, and Stallings are well aware of this, there is a playoff. They put the ball on the 25-yard line, give each team uh, one possession, and whoever scores the most points wins the game. This is Rhett running the ball over the left side, picking up three on the carry. Stop, number 
And with the tiebreaker that has been used in the other divisions of play in the NCAA, Division 1A is the only one of the, the divisions or groupings in college football that does not have a playoff rule in force. And I think they should myself, but the coaches don't want it. 32 yard line. We've had 14 ties this year involving Division 1A schools. Back to Rhett, back to Matthews, back to Rhett. And it works for nine yards. Now make it five yards. Stop made by number 73, Jeremy Dunley. Little toss, little hand back. Now they bring out the defense, the DBs and put in the LBs with Rogers and Odin going back into the backfield. Third and short, not a bad time to throw. Third and one. Rhett's got 10 catches now in the ball game. He gets single coverage out here. They give it to Rhett, swing him outside. He's got the first down. They got him out there in a position where only Donnelly had a shot at him and he couldn't handle it. And he gets the first down. One of the reasons that this play is successful is the block right out here, the wide receiver on the corner. You got a tight end over there, he gets a hook block. Now the wide receiver gets his man down and it's the free safety Donnelly that has to come over and knock him out. First down Florida, the ball at the Alabama 23. Willie Jackson in motion. There's your flag. They got Alabama in the neutral zone. Throw the ball to Keller, the tight end. And he'll go out of bounds at the 17. I think the uh, center saw Eric Curry in the neutral zone and snapped the ball. Your attention, please. Melvin Miller. Melvin Miller, please come to the front box. Melvin Miller. It's offside against Alabama. Alabama offside on the last play. <laughs> So the center alert to things. Of course, he's alert to a lot of things. David Swain, a sophomore offensive lineman, University of Florida, the Honda Scholar Athlete Award winner this week, brought to you by American Honda, proud to support amateur athletics. David honors as an academic SEC team member for the past two seasons. 3-1-1 GPA and civil engineering. Honda presenting a check for $3,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Florida. Put the ball at the 18, first and five. Matthews to the end zone for Willie Jackson. Incomplete, out of bounds. Looked like a little pushing to me down there. Well, Tommy Johnson had the coverage on him. Here's Willie Jackson, the leading receiver on this club. Watch Jackson. Yeah, he pushed him off. Yeah. It's a good call, too. A good call. Well, I'm going to watch the feet, which means I don't necessarily see the hand. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's true. And, and I think the official may have been blocked out because he yep. was on the other side. Yep. Second and five. Pressure runs him out of there. Antonio London after him. Pass is caught. Willie Jackson at the two-yard line. First and goal, Florida. Well, Matthews makes the play. It's his own coverage. Now, now, he just hangs. He knows he's open. He just hangs. He says, hey, I don't have to go anywhere. Just drift a little bit the same way Matthews is going. Matthews makes the play. Buying time. First and goal from the two. Maybe a little bit, maybe a half a yard. Michael Rogers, 52. Spurrier in the back of his mind. You're using up some plays down here now. If he's going to go for two points after this score, the same plays he's calling now may be that two-point play. So he may be using up his two-point play just to get it in. Second down and goal. Rhett, touchdown. We've got a little over eight minutes to 
play. Here's the point. So big. John Davis. Got it. 21-21 tie with 8.09 to play in the game. Curry ran right by him. Just a little juke and he went right past him. Back in 1933, Alabama was the first team to win an SEC championship. Tonight, they're trying to win their 20th. And they got a problem right now because Florida has come storming back from 21 to 7 down to tie them at 21. And Florida matches up much better against Alabama than they did last week against FSU. FSU was explosive and Florida just couldn't handle it. Palmer creeping up. He's trying. They're trying to get him involved in it. Now they pitch it back to Sherman Williams, our running back, and he's coming around. Nobody to help him over there. So it was a good idea, but there was nobody on this side of the field to help him. And down he goes at the 33. Let's go back now. Watch the line. The line is going to slant. Go ahead and run it. The line is going to slant. Curry is going to be upfield, way upfield, and, and Red is going to cut inside of him. Derek Lassick is back in the ball game and running back. He's well rested. Blitz coming. They've got him at the 23-yard line, and it's Carlton Miles making the hit. Number 31. Oh, he came free like a runaway truck. If you're going to throw, first down is the best down. But Zook, the coordinator, is blitzing on first down. Alabama is uh, out of their element. Their running game has been stopped, and they're forced to throw the football. Down goes Parker again. This time, it is Ellis Johnson, a defensive tackle. That makes the hit all the way back on the 15-yard line. They've got to go to the 43 to get the first down. So they got third and 28 coming up. Florida lost their entire defensive line. Mentioned earlier, six of their seven uh, top defensive linemen are gone because of injury, graduation, academics, whatever. And this is a very young defensive line. Now, what's building up here? Alabama's backing up. Their punter has had two dreadful kicks, 16 and 21 yards. Florida defense is about to hand over to the Florida offense. A huge opportunity unless Alabama can come up with a big play here. And they won't do it as Parker is able to get rid of the ball, but he was, he was under siege. So... Here's what they were looking for. The Florida defense certainly doing its job. Six twenty-five to play in the game. Well, right now at least Walter Mitty lives, and uh, Old Mo is uh, wearing a blue jersey. Pressure's on Deal. Well, he didn't get it again. And he gets a bad bounce. And it's barely across the 40-yard line. So Deal has hit three bad punts in a row. 16, 21, and 26. And Florida is knocking on the door trying to untie it in the fourth quarter. Florida coach Steve Spurrier talking about his senior quarterback Shane Matthews. Shane Matthews has been excellent in the big games for us over the last three years. He's uh, He's been there when we've won 19 out of 22 conference games and every one of them. And uh, he's played very well in the fourth quarter in the close games. So we're hoping that this thing will stay close. And if it will, hopefully something good will happen to us late in the game. In this game, new SEC single season record, all-time SEC passer, 
tied Dan Marino with 74 touchdown passes in his career. From the 41, puts it up high, incomplete, intended for tight end Keller. The Alabama defense has got to stand up right here. Well, it's the best against the best. Uh, Matthews holds 14 SEC records and 45 Florida records, and you're going against the number one defense in the country. A lot of people didn't think they could put 21 points on the board, but they have. Second down and 10. Houston in motion. Thank you, sir. Hand it off to Rep. They don't stop him, but they at least slowed him down that time. It was interesting that Curry and Copeland were both at deep penetration, but they were both a fraction late in getting there, and he ran right by them. The Alabama defense has only allowed one other team to go to score more than 11 points. That was Mississippi State. It is third down and seven for Florida. The ball is on the Alabama 37. Pass is away and it is incomplete and it was Eric Curry. This time he didn't miss. He's been running by people all day, but this time he unloaded. Five men this time rushing for Alabama. And there's nobody downfield open. He just throws it away. You might want to know that Eric Curry received his degree in criminal justice last August. It's a Prop 48. Came to Alabama. Had to sit out a year. Yeah, Prop 48. He graduated a year early. Right? Yep. <laughs> 5-27. To play in the game. 21 21 tie as Florida has to put it. It bounces, it bounces, it bounces beyond the goal line. But just barely. I want to tell you, Shane Edge was within a whisker of putting that thing out dead in Coffin Corner. Your game summary look down at the bottom. The last three have been 16, 21, and 26. Always, it seems, in tough ball games, that kicking game gets involved, doesn't it? Lasik is the single back, has the ball. Skates around, looks for daylight, finds two yards. Alabama comes in, averaging 216 yards rushing and only 150 passing. Their strength is on the ground, and that's where they got to go back to. Here's what they've done tonight, Alabama. 154 yards passing and only 93. Florida has successfully stopped them on the ground. That's the first carry Lassick's had since the middle of the third quarter. He finds some daylight. A whole lot of it. First down, Alabama, out at the 47-yard line. And Lassick seems, no, he's all right. He's, he's wobbled and will come out of the game. You go back to your strength. Miles, 31, was blitzing, but he was picked up again by Houston. And the strength is their running game. He came off holding uh, his midsection. May have fallen, knocked, knocked the wind out of him. Anderson's in there right now, and they get Anderson behind the line of scrimmage. 57 makes the play for Florida. That's the second big play of the second half for Kevin Carter. Lassick has 113 yards now for Alabama on 18 carries and two touchdowns. Four minutes coming up on the game clock in a 21-21 tie. And <laughs> wouldn't it be something if we did have to use the tiebreaker? The loss on the play puts the ball back inside the 44, where it's second down and 13. Parker throws, Palmer catches, out of bounds, incomplete. Well, here's a look at Palmer. Releases inside of Groh. He's going to get up on White, number two.
never had possession. Until he was out of bounds. Uh, that was kind of that was slow motion, but and when he when he hits, he's out. That was very close. Third down. Very close. Alabama has two timeouts remaining. Florida all three of theirs. That ball sailed. Wembley was coming across the middle and uh, the ball just came out of Barker's hands and sailed away into the dark of the night. And in comes the kicking team. And Deal comes on the field. Now Brian brings a heavy, heavy burden with him. His confidence level can't be very high. Nope, can't be. He is kicking into uh, some win. Well, you get into this, you just simply have to ignore win and just think only of mechanics. You must really lock yourself down to the mechanics of it. And that's much better. Duncan with a fair catch call back around the 21 yard line. And at 3.25 to uh, go in the ball game, it's a 21 21 tie, a 35 yard punt. The prize for the winner of this ball game, of course, as we've told you all night long, is the USF and G Sugar Bowl New Year's night in New Orleans. Who's to say how far we are from having settled this issue? And if Florida wins, it just cracks the world insofar as all of the bowl assignments and everything. I mean, it's an incredible mess. The battle, <laughs> the battle of New Orleans. Alabama wins. Alabama wins. They'll probably yeah. play Miami. Yep. One versus two. But first, let's settle this one, and that's a cracking good one as Matthews goes back and throws. Intercepted by Langham. He's on his way. Touchdown, Alabama. the big play to start the win against the old foe Auburn a week ago on Thanksgiving Day and steps up tonight. Matthews telegraphed that one, however. Alabama has 59 interceptions over the last 36 games. So they've got some pretty talented people in that secondary. And here's Proctor for the point try. At 316 to play in the game, Alabama back to the lead at 28-21. And Steve Spurrier looks crushed. For the Here's moment. Langham here. Watch the receiver is just going to go down and run a curl. Langham with good vision all the way. He's got safety help deep. He reads the quarterback, jumps in front of him. His second interception returned for a touchdown this year. There you look at the receiver. Now, Langham has deep help. He can gamble for this short pass. This is his sixth interception of the year, his 12th career interception, and his third touchdown, two on, punt, on, on interception returns and one on a punt return. And it's the first turnover of the ball game. up to the Gators. They were down at one time uh, by 14 points. Now they got to come back again. No pressure. Just makes a great play. And you need to know this. Langham, the corner, and Teague, the other corner, came in leading the SEC in interceptions. And when, when you have big play corners, you better make sure you know where they're at before you throw out there on them. High hanging kick in the wind. Very short. Rolling around. Very effective for Alabama as Houston came up and covered it after it had hit one of the Florida players when it bounced and put it down on the 22. Now here's Spurrier calling the plays. Alabama is second in the nation in turnover margin. They are now plus 17. Florida, on the other hand, is last in the conference in giving the ball away at minus 11.
From the 22, first down for the Gators. Three wide ups. Matthews pass on the fingertips of Willie Jackson and good. Out at the 40. That's a first down. Florida with all three of its timeouts remaining. Plenty of time. Put it on the 39-yard line. Three steps out of bounds. First down. 3-0-7 to play in the game. 28-21, Alabama. Pass too high for the tight end, Greg Keller, junior out of New Orleans. Trying to go home, New Year's night. Spurrier has been outstanding. In six years in college football as a head coach, he's had a quarterback lead the conference five of the six years in passing. Touched by another Alabama man, and finally Rodgers caught it. The Alabama defense stepping up and taking control of the game. They can't get there, but uh, Odom, 56, gets his hand on it. Rodgers... And Rogers interception. There's Odom. And it's first down Alabama, Florida, 48-yard line, 252 to play. Lassick is back. Runs into the stack. And there's nothing there. We talked, I talked with Gene Stallings the other day when I was down in Tuscaloosa about when can you break a quarterback's heart? When you can you break a team's heart to take away their will? And he said, then, I don't think you can. That bunch that's coming up from Gainesville, and he may be right. We'll see. Right there is a tip and a big play. You know, you never know when you're going to be involved in one, and that one, Odom, big turnover. Heavy is the burden when one wants it so much. But there's 2.37 left to play. It is second down and 10 for Alabama. He may get it one more time. Walker's got it on a bootleg. Got out of there, too. And he's close to, in fact, I think he's got a first down. Whoa, if he's got a first down, that'll be huge. At two and a half minutes to play. 41 is a linebacker. Robinson lined up outside and a gutsy call. He got the ball in the wrong arm, too. Yeah, and he, and he has the presence of mind not to go out of bounds. Ed Robinson, uh, the inside linebacker, junior uh, of the Phoenix Springs, Florida, is the man who is hurt. Two and a half minutes to play in the inaugural SEC championship game. The AP top 10 is the basis from which the coalition will make the decisions tomorrow in Atlanta and determine the bowl assignments. And uh, the talk all along has been that if Alabama beats Florida, then you could very well get Miami and Alabama for the national championships, one and two in the Sugar Bowl. It would be the first time in a good long time We've had one and two squared off. And you had, you'd have the two best defenses in the country in that ball game. Miami gets after it pretty good. Might take a week to score. 
<laughs> well, we hope Ed's all right. He's huffing and puffing a bit. If Alabama wins, they'll have 681 victories in their illustrious history. That's just one behind Texas. And Texas is back of Notre Dame. Notre Dame is behind Michigan, the all-time winner at 730. The ball rests at the Gators' 36-yard line. It is a first down for Alabama. And 218 to play in the game. a little. Marquette Oliver was the first one to get there, number eight. Oliver makes the stop. Florida, Florida spends another timeout. They've got one remaining. Now, if Alabama wins, here is the probable bowl scenario. When I say probable, and put it in caps. USF and G Sugar, we told you about it. Georgia would go to the Citrus against Ohio State, and John Cooper's been reconfirmed as the coach of the Buckeyes. Good for him. Should have happened a long time ago. Fiesta will get Syracuse and either Colorado or Nebraska. Depending if Nebraska can beat Kansas State in Tokyo, then they will go to yep. the Orange Bowl. And that would put them in the Orange Bowl against Notre Dame. Florida then will go to the Gator Bowl against NC State, and Texas A&M would play Florida State in the Cotton Bowl. But Shane Matthews might say we're not ready to concede. What was that? He was sugar, sugar. huh? Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> sugar on feet. No sugar. It'll be second down and 12. And all of uh, the Gators are up, blitzing, trying to stop the run. Palmer swinging it around. Cut it back into traffic. Didn't feel like he had any room to run outside. Might have if he kept going that way. Another Gator is down and hurt on the play, and they'll take time here. David Palmer got it back about to the original line of scrimmage. 1.49 remaining in the ball game. In 28, Alabama, 21, Florida, and the Gators spend the time out. Let me tell you about the folks who have put this thing together you've been watching. Executive producer of ABC Sports, Jack O'Hara. Coordinating producer and tonight's producer of ABC's College Football, Bob Goodrich. Directed by Larry Cam. Our technical director, Gary Larkins. Associate producer of College Football, Jim Ressler. Associate director, Dave Kiviat. Production manager, Lenny Nathan. Our tech ops managers, Les Weiss and Frank Figger. Assistant to the producer, Steve Shunkin, Paula Coker. Statistician, Dave Bernson. Spotter, Todd Barry. Our computer statistician, Mark Demento. Our booth coordinator, Paula DeBleek. Our sideline coordinator, Dick Shafter. I want to thank everybody in Birmingham having come here for so many times and worked with the people of the Southeastern Conference, Commissioner Roy Kramer and all of his people. Terrific job in their opening effort. And I'll guarantee you there's a lot of work goes into a party like this. Yes, sir. It's, been a, been a, it's really been a, like a mini Super Bowl here yep, this week. It really has. If time permits, of course, we'll have the 50 car rental post game report, the scores and highlights, as we can collect them in a hurry. Right now, with 149, David Palmer steps in at quarterback for Alabama. Little option action here. Run around, kill some time. Penalty flag down, and Palmer comes around the country. I think that might be a late flag because I see a zero on the 25 second clock. They might have burned it. Looked to me like the Gators may have jumped offside. Could be that too. Ball before the snap. Ball start. Offense. Still third down. Hold the clock five seconds. I think the right guard uh, was moving. Stevenson was moving on that. Pulled the defensive man. Alabama's third down conversions have not been very good tonight. They're two out of 12. But the thing that is most precious of all right now for Florida is time. 
There's only 144 left. Well, they need a turnover. Yep. They need to knock the ball loose. Third down and 15. Barker is back at quarterback. Go, go, get Give it to Lassick. Get through there. And they finally get a hold of a leg and drag him down at about the 36, and that's where this possession started, and Kevin Carter makes the tackle. And the clock is now running at 1.30 and counting, and Florida has run out of timeouts. They have none left. They can't stop the clock anymore with a timeout. And so it looks kind of grim for the Gators, who put up a noble effort. They played played well to come storming back they, against they the They really played well, defense. Keith. And as, as Spurrier was telling us yesterday, he really thought that this was going to be a down year, kind of a hump year. It was he was eight and three. He lost six of his seven defensive linemen. He lost four of his five offensive linemen. And when you don't have the horses up front, then you then you're looking at a rebuilding year. He went eight and three coming into this ball game on a hump year. Look out for the Gators uh, in the future. Deal is on the field to fight for Alabama. We've now gone inside a minute at 57 seconds. Deal's last effort was a much better 35-yarder. Five-yard penalty against Alabama for burning the clock. Well, the, the thing here, don't care about Florida's got to go after a block. They are last in the conference in punt returns, yep. so they really have really no hope of returning a punt for a touchdown, maybe blocking one. This is a circumstance where you'd kind of like to have the punter say to the center, can you snap it an extra five yards? <laughs> good snap. Pressure's on. He gets it out. It's a good kick. Anything over the line would be a good kick yep. in this situation. That's right. Tide downs it back inside the 10 at the 9. And uh, Florida will get the ball back with 45 seconds remaining. And no time out. Can you imagine how hard it is to go 11 and 0 in the Southeastern Conference? And then win a championship game on top of it. Yep. Ooh. And this has been like a playoff game. Well, you know, it, has. it really has. Penalty flag passes away, and the pass is incomplete. But there's a flag thrown way back up the field as the pass was intended for Willie Jackson. Rom Gilbert. What a hit. 12, 13 people out of the field. 12 players participating. Illegal. Defense. Results in a penalty. First down. And an extra man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of ironic, too, that Shane Matthews has been the guy to move the, gate, uh, the Gators and keep them in the ball game. And it was one of his throws that is the difference right now. Yeah, it's very, very true. But an outstanding career, and if he can get one here, he's uh, he's pulling something out of his hat. 38 seconds. Pass is incomplete up the sideline. Aubrey Hill, a sophomore from Miami, was running right down the chalk and couldn't get it on the sideline. 30 seconds. If Stallings' defense ends the season number one in, in all the defensive categories that they are right now, they would only be the second team ever to uh, finish the season number one in every defensive category. Oklahoma did it in 86. Matthews launches a rocket. Intercepted and then dropped. Looked like Johnson was going to get away with it. Then it looked for a second like Trey Everett might steal it, but neither could get it. This ball goes through his hands. Yes, it did, right and, through it. And, and could have been caught by Everett. Oh. I mean, would that have been something or what? Because oh. he was behind everybody at that point. Third down. Well, Willie 
Jackson. It is incomplete. A fierce collision between Langham and Jackson. But they're doing the right thing. I mean, they're giving it a chance. I mean, these you're down by seven. You need to score. You got no timeouts and the clock's against you. You've got to do these types of things and, and you're going to get punished. 15 seconds. Fourth down. In comes Duncan with a play. Sugar Bowl on the left. That's incomplete. It'll be Alabama's ball. They have to snap it nine seconds after the incomplete forward pass. Matthews finishes 30 of 49, 287 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions, and a train load of quarterback records. He came to Gainesville from Tuscadura, Mississippi. If the Gators were to have a chance, Shane Matthews had to lead him, and he did. This should do it. Alabama wins the inaugural Southeastern Conference Championship game by a score of 28 to 21. Gene Stallings has replaced the Bears. will go on to the next level. Now let's go to Jack. Well, Keith, this has got to be the hero of the game, Antonio Langham. Tell me about that interception. Well, we knew we had to win the game. We, with our team, we played and winning on defense, on offense. We needed to play. The game was crucial. And, uh, you know, when you need the big play, you got to work hard to get it. And we was in a zone coverage. I read it. I read his release. He made a throw. I made the break. Touchdown. Most guys get one great interception like that, as you did at the Auburn game. Now two in less than two weeks. Yeah, it, it, hey, it, it's fun. It's exciting. You want to be the man, make the big play, you know. And we got a philosophy, you know. You win on D, count on me. And, you know, I want to be one. We all got to carry our load. I carried my load, and I came up with the interception for a touchdown. Okay, it's Sugar Bowl time. Do you want to take it to Miami? Oh, yes. I want the same thing that happened for a touchdown here. They happened against Miami. Well, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Keith? Yes. You think he'll sleep any tonight? <laughs> the key play of the ball game. Well, here it is. Matthews had been the story, taking the Gators on three touchdown drives. A little short hook route of the wide receiver. Langham reads the route. He ran one back last week against Auburn for a touchdown. And that's the difference. It pains the Gators, it frustrates Shane Matthews, it bothers them all the way home, I'm sure. But they all should sleep well and walk with a head high because they gave it a go. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Shane Matthews of Florida, Derek Lassick of Alabama, Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their achievements in academics and to help them in financial need. We hope you've enjoyed another season of college football on ABC Sports. Alabama's headed for the USF&G Sugar Bowl and probably against the Miami Hurricanes. So we have that to look forward to. And uh, I'm Keith Jackson along with Bob Greasy. Greasy has been a terrific year with you. I've enjoyed it. Jack Arute, the intrepid soldier who has labored through sun, rain, and snow. And uh, Alabama comes away 28-21, the winner 
of the 1992 Southeastern Conference Championship. Monday, the Houston Oilers battling for a playoff spot host the Chicago Bears. Two of the league's hardest-hitting teams collide on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper butler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. By Honda, celebrating its 10th anniversary of automobile production in the United States by Xerox, the document company, and by UPS. For reliable on-time delivery throughout Europe and around the world, you can trust UPS. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.